This is me. Just kidding. This is me. My name is Amanda, and welcome to my podcast where I will be talking about pop culture, music, film, drama, and fan videos. Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Always Popular. I'm Amanda, your host, and today we're doing something a little bit different on my channel. For this week's episode, instead of the usual pop culture stuff I do, this week, I did my first interview with my old classmate who I went to college with. Normally, if you have seen any previous content on my channel, you know you only hear my voice. Instead, you will actually see my face. Dante is a hip-hop artist and is releasing his new EP album, so I got an opportunity to interview him. So this is our interview. This is actually a very special. You are officially like the very first person to be on my podcast, so. Really? Congratulations. Well, I feel very, I feel very happy about that. It's been, it's been since Leighton. <laughs> yeah, but pretty much. So. Yeah. You still work there? I uh, still work where? At, at the college at Ramapo. No, actually, I don't work at Ramapo. It's actually kind of interesting. I, I was actually looking into some jobs actually there, but then I was thinking, you know what? I kind of want to branch out and like kind of like do some other stuff. So, mm. and then I'm kind of like. So I can like all my choices and s stuff like that and career goals. Yeah. How has this podcast been going so far? This is actually doing a lot better actually than I thought. So, and it's actually a lot of fun. I definitely got to a, a lot of brand new things, especially in like video editing and also in podcasting in general. Also, in actually my self-esteem, which is kind of interesting because I was always camera shy and I never... <laughs> Yeah. Take yeah, you never, you never, you never talk much in the, uh, in class. Very shy. <laughs> yep. And that's general. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see the side of you. Well, thanks. Well, today is really all about you. I actually have some questions actually prepared for you. So awesome. <laughs> First question for you is how did you get your start in music? So, when I, all right. So yeah, I, I really feel like music just came from the inspiration of hip hop. So like when I was younger, everybody has their story. And, you know, my story led me to hip hop. Luckily, my mother into it. So like I would be in the car with her and she would just, you know, it, we, she had satellite radio. So she like put on 8045 and and like, she used to put on like the old school hip hop stuff. So I would listen to all these artists like I would listen to like EPMD, Master Ace. M, Tupac, Biggie, what you call it? And I'm trying to think. I, I don't know why I'm shot right now for artists. Naughty by Nature, Funk Master Flex putting like mixtapes and stuff out. Like there's just so much stuff flying. You know, Nas, anything really that had to do with hip hop, my mom was listening to. Cool J. But like just it took here that stuff and I related to a lot of the things that they were saying because even though I was young, like it's not like I was, it's not like I was like blind, like orally, like I can hear them. And I can hear what they were saying and like I could just kind of relate. And I, I was that type of kid that would just sit in the back of the car and just absorb it all. So then it got to the point where I was like 12 or 13 and I was really into poetry. I don't I have no idea, I guess, just to express like my feelings and stuff. And then I met with my one friend and he was like, oh, we should start a rap group. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Let's do it. And I think at that time, me and him were really into like Drake and Lil Wayne or some shit like that. But like into old school hip hop, my flow cadence and everything was just so different than Drake and Lil Wayne. And like you could hear my friend was trying so hard to sound like them. But like, I, I don't even want to go into it. I don't want to say anything stupid, but it was just like it was funny. It was a, it was a mess, but it was. It was my first thing. Like I remember, we used to we had we had our flat screens. We would put the instrumental volume like really high and just rap over it. It was just not really like even mixed. It was just us just being kids and like that's literally how I started. And I was I guess like I just really liked how I felt after I put something out and heard myself on it, even though it sounded like garbage today. Like it was just how it came out. So like now I'm just kind of like, man, I, I you know, I gotta, I gotta keep going with this. And then like, you know, over a couple of years, I just went to college for it and learned certain things there. I was always more of the artist. I was, I was, I did more of the artist producing was never really my thing, but I could produce. It's just, I prefer to like focus on my lyrical ability and being an artist. Yeah. Well, that's a, well, that's actually really good for you because probably one thing I lack is probably like actually making my own music. I still kind of struggle actually. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah, I hear that. 
<laughs> yeah. Especially like a certain class that I took, especially like at Rampo, it was kind of like difficult for me, but I definitely didn't easy, yeah. want but to you get made it through. That. You made it through. I think the hardest thing at Ramapo, but I have to go back. I still have a, I still have a couple uh, credits left, but the hardest thing I, I've been having in the past is music theory. Oh my God, music theory one is hard, and and that professor just doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I wonder what which teacher you're talking about, but we don't. Have I'm to talking talk. about the the old guy with like the gray hair comb back, and I think I think he had glasses. I don't remember, but oh, it, it wasn't that teacher. No, I think I know who. I, talking about yeah no not 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 the younger guy the younger guy was cool little 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 weird but he was cool <laughs> <laughs> he made it fun because so. honestly like when it comes to music classes i, I feel like it really all depends on the teachers like did well with and then only, mm -hmm. only one that like i didn't do yeah. well well you'll have a teacher that expects you to know it all already from the get-go and then you'll have a teacher that will try to implement um, certain strategies to get you to understand what he's talking about. And that's the kind of person that one guy was, which is why I like. True. Um, also, like with like your musical goals and, uh, and stuff like that. So so was music uh, like always something that you wanted to actually do like in like your life? Sarily. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I always did it as a hobby. I got hurt. I, I wanted to play football. Football was like my, it was, football had my heart. And uh, I feel like, I think that's because like growing up, how I grew up and stuff, like I had a lot of positive male role models on the football fields that were like my coaches and stuff. And that really gave me like some kind of comfort. And then when I got older, I just, you know, like I got hurt in high school. So I, I had to get surgery like on both my shoulders and threw my football career away. Weird because like when I, because like I obviously I started late. So like I started music and I really got into music at like 13 14 i mean i was doing music when i was a kid like i was in chorus and stuff like that but it wasn't the music i wanted to do it was like 13 and 14 when i started doing the stuff that sat well with me and then it took about over the couple of years of me between me playing football and me doing music i guess with the injuries and everything music started to creep up on me and just gain my attraction more it took to when i was like i was like 17 or 16 and some my mom's friend found out I really like doing music and she just gave me like a USB microphone and it was a Disney microphone for like a Disney game but record with it so I was like screw it I'll take it like definitely not the best quality I didn't know though at the time because I didn't go to school but I started recording with that and then you know I made a couple of tracks I had on SoundCloud and that I became the SoundCloud rapper when I was like 16, 17. It was about the same time Fetty Wap was like, you know, making his debut. And then after that, I just like everything went forward after that and just kept going. Yeah, that's, that actually kind of makes me think of actually like kind of like my career actually like in like sports too, because I actually played actually field hockey for a long time, and then, you know, and then I, that's like a that's a big long story. But, you know, like you don't have to hear about it, but it's like, yeah. I, you know, stopped playing like hockey so and then and then and then like i focus on music so mm -hmm. kind of interesting we kind of like similar like sports mm -hmm. you know, paths so oh yeah so that's kind of cool that you were into football and stuff like that i'm actually yeah it actually makes me think it's like a lot of people i feel that were in sports it really depends on the reason you were in sports because like i feel like a lot of people go to sports some people go to it just for the game itself but to some people i feel like it's more than a game i feel like some people it's like they're battling something internally and then if like you get if you get hurt like you got to find another outlet to battle that internally i guess i kind of you know sort of you know like ag agree with that you know you need like an outlet to get i guess all your emotions and stuff like that out or to write yourself in some way right. that you like so i, I guess that all kind of like makes sense now this is actually one question that I've been waiting to ask you for like kind of like a long time actually so so like I know that you have like kind of like a stage name and, and like a lot of artists you know go by like a different name I want to ask you how do you pronounce your stage name because I because guinea mob guinea mob because I knew that if I even mentioned it I knew it was the everyone says genie it's like I know it's annoying it, it's guinea mob though okay Def definitely gonna have to write that down because yeah I did I didn't want to say it because like I knew I would have said yeah. idiot. Yeah, no, to make it like 
I feel like you really got to be Italian or have some kind of awareness on Italian culture. Actually, it's Italian Heritage Month month right now. But I feel like you have to kind of have some awareness on Italian culture to understand that word. So when the minute you see Guinea, it's like, oh, like if you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I like I definitely didn't want to like, you know, like start off like the interview with like, you know, like saying saying your stage, say like your stage name and then like, yeah, and then like saying it wrong. And I'm like, yeah, that's not <laughs> right. Yeah, no, that would have been embarrassing. So yeah, it's, it's cool. It happens. Well, that's why I had to ask you about it. So now I know that you're coming out with actually uh, brand new music soon. So I wanted to ask you. What what was your main inspiration and or, you know, like maybe like behind your album? Well, so, I mean, this piece of work is something I've been meeting after my first album that I released. And it just was like, a, it, it's a really long process because like this, this is an EP I'm putting out right now, which is like a pre like preview of like what the album is going to be. So it's only going to be like four or five songs, but it's new material. There's a cover for it. It's basically just like, it's called My Inferno. So it's basically about my hell. So like when I get in, when I have to scoop myself to that level of talking about my innermost personal feeling, it can be really hard sometimes because like I just have to really be in that mood. And like something has to happen to like put me into, okay, I can write about this. Like it's really hard for me. Like, cause like, I mean, a lot of people don't know who I am outside of like my art, my artist, but like, you know, just being that person, like I've, I've always tried to be happy. I always try to be positive and productive and, you know, laugh and start jokes and stuff everywhere. Like I always, I always try to be that, you know, happy person and, you know, always caregiving. And I really never try to be that mope around, you know, you know, depressed about whatever. And like, you know, talk about my problems type of person. And even if I do talk about my problems, it's just like, whatever, like I'm not, I'm not showing pain. So like for me, actually having the show pain in these songs is like, I feel like it's like the hardest thing. But at the same time, once it comes out, it's like it's the most relatable thing. So like people heard certain parts and like certain gist of my first album where it's like a little bit about me, but it wasn't about like what really had, you know, what really gets me. Like everything like this is so this is the EP called My Inferno. It's 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 basically the start of a big project I'm working on. It sounds pretty cool to me. <laughs> so yeah. I mean like an EP or or even like a full length album, it's going to, you know, put out anyway. Yeah. So. yeah, the full length album is gonna take some time because I, I wanna do a lot for it because you, I uh, thing is, this is a very competitive storyline. So like, yeah, this is my inferno. Th um, I know my name's Dante, but I'm not Dante from the freaking 1400s. I mean, you know, he's long gone. But that piece of artwork that the original Dante did during the Renaissance period was probably one of the most memorable and praised pieces of literature in and even till today that there's colleges that talk about it, how the, the articulate perspective you know and how it was and you know and he was the first he was one of the first writers to actually break that latin you know that latin tongue and like just add that italian twist to it. stuff that stuff became very popular in the west at the time like it was he didn't even need a computer to have so many people praise that book but like it's just it's amazing and the artwork that came behind it too was just you know outstanding so like for the album i'm definitely gonna have a lot more not only a lot more music but i want to do like a little booklet packet with a lot of cool art from people like that's donating art to the inferno and stuff and i want to have that included like if i were to make like a cd like have all those pictures included there that's that's in the future though that's a lot of planning i have to do a photo shoot i'll do some i'm gonna i'm gonna mix it up too like i'm not just gonna have paintings like i'm gonna have i'm gonna have like a little bit of graphic design photos of like stuff with me and make it very descriptive it definitely sounds like it for sure you know that, that, that you know planning and then you know pre-planning and mm -hmm. yeah that's gonna take a lot of time yeah that's for sure <laughs> it's it's always like a big pro like even like for even like a podcast or even or even releasing music people don't realize how long it actually takes to actually make and they right. you know, expect like a, a lot of artists to you know, release you know like you know music a lot sooner but it's like yeah big process especially when you care about your work like i mean you could honestly be that one like for example today you got a lot of people that just don't give a give, give a shit about what they're saying 
and they'll just walk into the studio. They'll just, you know, start smoking with the people and like, or they'll puff a blunt, whatever. And then they're like, all right, let's start recording. Like, and then they just say whatever. A lot of it don't rhyme. And then all, all the struggle goes to the producer to make it work or the engineer to be like, okay, this word from this sentence rhymes with this word from like the fifth sentence. Let's try to let's try to make magic with this. And that dude don't even remember what he said on the mic because he was so stoned. And then it's just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, but there, if you care about your work, you're going to have a successful. At least, even if, at the end of the day, like even if I had five people that were real people that actually heard what I said, I would take that over somebody's million because that million, that's not real. That these people that are recording those music or that music and it's not it's not to the heart and everything. It's just a, it's just the temporary vibe. It's just to get through a certain time. That person's gonna be forgotten. But think about all the artists like that made music from the heart, all the artists that did things, that stuff is still going on today. There's people 20, 30, 40 years from now, even further, like, you know, that still listen to classical music, that still listen to, you know, old school hip hop or even R and B in the eighties and certain things like that, that stuff was coming from people who were in it because they actually loved it. It wasn't, a, a, it wasn't a finance thing at the time. It, it wasn't, I'm coming in this to make a quick buck. It was no, I love music and I'm here to make it. And that stuff's going to live forever. True. And oh, sorry. Like, you know, like if you can hear any barking and like in the background, that, mm-hmm. you know, that would be my puppy. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> <laughs> about that. What kind of dog? Um, she is uh, she, uh, she's a mutt, so she's like a mixture of like everything. So she's like, uh-huh. so she's yeah, like, they're the best. <laughs> yeah, and loud too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mean that is very true. There's still a lot of music like from like the '90s, like in early 2000s, and you know, it it all depends on like the artist and. But I mean, you know, like if I can tell that it's like kind of like from like kind of like like that's like some some of the best music that I love to listen to personally. So. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't know that much about like old school hip hop, but of course you probably do. Yeah. <laughs> like I've heard like, like a bunch of like probably like, you know, like big names and stuff like that. But to be honest, I probably have barely even listened. You got Prodigy, Pac, Biggie, uh, Snoop, Rakim, Eric and Eric B too. Eric B and Rakim. Hello, Cool J, Ice T, Ice Cube, NWA. Oh, now I'm saying I'm Raekwon. <laughs> I couldn't think of them before. I just, I don't know. Like, now that I'm calm and, like, I'm relaxed, and I'm like, all right, we got this interview going. All the old school people come to my head. (laughs) That's okay. At least I know probably, like, at least half of those names. So that makes me proud. Yeah, exactly. That's good. Yeah, you know know some stuff. You got got Q-Tip. You got a lot of people. There's so many old school people. It's crazy. Brand new being. So, uh, actually, speaking of, like, other style, you know, like, you know, certain styles of music. So, besides besides hip hop so like so are there uh, so are there like other styles of music that you um like to listen to yeah i like some r&b once in a while i like i used to love motown music it's like the beginning of like uh you got like the temptations the supremes the jackson 5 the smoky robinson marvin gay like i used to love stuff like that like i thought that was really cool I like I like some rock music. Don't get me wrong. I I like my rock here and there. Like I like Led Zeppelin, um, Aerosmith. I mean, yeah, all that stuff is cool. I like I like women music. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I like I like my Adele here and there. Like me and me and one of my one, me and one of my peoples was just listening to an Adele song in the car. I was like, oh man, this goes in. Like man, she speaks to your soul. Like Adele is good. I, I like stuff like that. Okay, that's good. I like so, a lot of different music. Okay, well, that's good. And also, speaking of you actually also released your music, like one thing I have noticed is that you've been releasing music since when, like what, like 2020 or like, or, or was it even? 2019. I, I was, I think 2019 was the debut of my first album, Bag. And that was, that was in 2019, I, I believe. It could have been 2020. You might be right. <laughs> I thought it was 2019, but I could be wrong. Well, to be honest, you know, like, you know, like I could be wrong too. So, yeah. I mean, so, but. I, no, it was, it was 2019. It was, it was almost 2020. It was the, I think it was December of 2019. Okay. So that's pretty cool. You know, because I was doing actually a little bit of research on you. So that felt kind of a, a little bit weird to actually Google you. And then like, mm-hmm. and then like certain things actually came up. I found yeah. out you actually did some live performances actually like in like the city and stuff like that so mm-hmm. i want to ask you like what has been your favorite place that you actually did a live performance at Ooh, <laughs> i never heard this question oh man i performed everywhere i performed in the straight up basements of like random spots in brooklyn and harlem and 
I mean, I don't know. I love doing those because I feel like I feel like you have you have a lot of people down there that are just sitting in the basements in the underground for the same the same reason you are that are going to give you the same attention in mind. These people are hungry, but these people are also looking for other people that are hungry to like make greatness with. So I really like doing those. Yeah. But my favorite, my favorite place to perform at or the best, the, my, the place that performed that, that I feel like I had the most success was Blackthorn 51. That was in Queens. And that was like a rock. It's actually like a rock club, but like power one Oh five would like rent it, rent it out sometimes to do like, like artists, like artist shows. And I would perform there and I would usually open up. Uh, there was one time I was right before Lou got cash. I, I did my stuff. And then there was another time I, I did a couple of things like, and I, I linked up with like EPMD and stuff over there. That was really cool. But that definitely, definitely Blackthorn was probably my favorite place. Cause I just felt like every time I got there, like I knew there was like a routine. I knew how it went. I get a couple of drinks. I'd sit down, chill, like communicate with a whole bunch of new people. Cause people would go there for country. You had people from Texas, you had people from, you know, Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, uh, Utah, Vermont. I mean, just all around the world, like just like certain heads just coming over there. So it was the best place to network. Well, that's really cool. Um, and record labels were there to watch too. So that's cool. That's even better. <laughs> yeah. I bet like all those people are like hiding in like the back and they're trying to be like all like secretive and stuff like that. Cause of, maybe because they don't want people to know that they're there or something. Right. Right. Yeah. They, no, they would sit on the side. They would just sit there. Well, that's really cool. And okay. So I think I have questions. Unfortunately, like I actually have a timer like on my. So it's going to tell me that actually that, that our, uh, that our meeting is almost over okay uh, so uh one thing i actually wanted to ask you was that when like you're not doing music what do you uh, actually do in your free time my free time so i work a lot <laughs> i mean i'm always always working like uh i mean obviously i have a nine to five because music doesn't pay the bills yet so i i definitely work and put a lot of hours in to invest not, not only save money for me and my son but invest in my music and then you know other than that I'll try to hang out with friends here and there, you know, just go out, have a good time, try to be as outgoing as I can and just, you know, network while I'm doing that too. Every, I'm, o I'm always moving, I'm, you know, I, I don't sleep much. <laughs> well, well, maybe you should. So, you know, sleep's always a good thing. Yeah. Somebody was texting me last night and they were like, yeah, you need to get your rest, man. I was talking to them until like two. They were like, you need to get your rest so you can, so you can think of some more bars to say. I was like, I probably should. <laughs> and I went to bed. Okay. So that's pretty cool. And, oh. Actually, one question I really wanted to ask you since the last time we saw each other in school. Oh, you know, a lot of people, you know, say like kind of like about like kind of like, you know, especially working in like music that getting like a college, you know, you know, education is not as important as like it used to be and that people can learn, you know, certain things at home. So like did any of like the classes that you actually did that actually benefit you or help your career in like any yeah, way? Most definitely learning about multicultural i like taking the multicultural music class it kind of taught me to create it, it, it kind of taught me to appreciate the cultures and stuff more like within the music and like all the different genres there were and people putting into it i really like the songwriting class i i took even though i don't use the methods there as at that much there is sometimes where my brain is just kind of like what do i do and then i'll go back and do some exercises there just to kind of like calm down and get into writing is also production class taught me a lot the recording like music production that taught me a lot and it definitely made me a better song recorder i'm not where i want to be with song recording but that's probably because i need to get into music theory and take music production too learn how to like do certain things and kind of make it even better These aren't horrible but they could be better with more school so school's definitely important says it's not especially in that field one guy like the guy that mixes my music and masters my music that guy that's been doing it for me he he has not went to school once but he has the years of experience of like keeping up to date with music and what was going on like this guy you actually want to talk about something crazy this guy used to actually have to slice files like like tapes like he used to have to slice them them together like cut and make certain things to mess with people's vocals and take what he wanted and like make audio and mix music that way now that ridiculous so yeah crazy well lucky for him to have you know you know experience so it's like multiple uh, opinions about stuff like that right 
it just drives me crazy because you know like i went yeah. so that i can get a job in music and you know of course yeah i mean but i feel like right now in days like today you kind of need it school for that especially for especially not only for the education of actually what you're doing but i feel like you need it for the status just to say yeah like my name is so and so i've been experienced in music for such and such time i have a degree like okay like that's the good first step and that's always going to put you uh, on a pedestal compared to everybody else true uh sadly we have to uh, wrap this up so dante uh thanks for joining me today and we will see each other in person maybe we can hang out soon of course i would love to just you know hit me up i'm always i'm always around <laughs> okay well and, and thanks for all your questions and i hear your new music yep november well somebody actually before you go somebody actually just leaked the state of my my album i wasn't happy with that <laughs> I found out um, November 10th. Right. That's right. You heard it here first. November 10th is the release date. Once again, thanks for watching and listening, and you'll hear me in the next episode.